And so this is the cooperatives question, right? Cooperatives, the accounting is very similar to that of non not non-profit organizations. Well, it can say a mixture of non-profit organizations and company accounts because their goal isn't to make a profit as well. So instead of profit and loss, you'll see the words surplus and deficit, right? Their goal is to benefit their members. But just like um, company accounts, cooperatives, they do an appropriation account. So when they get their surplus, surplus is the word they use for profit, they would make adjustments to their surplus before recording the re um keeping the rest as retained earnings. Well, what the company accounts will call retained earnings, they would call it undistributed surplus. So you know any partnership before you share up the profits, you have to um, make adjustments to it in the appropriation account. You said to add back your interest on drawings, minus the interest on capital, minus the salaries, and then you can share the profits. All right, in company accounts, when they get their profits, they have to um transfer any money to reserves and then they have to pay their dividends to ordinary shareholders and preference shareholders. And then the rest they keep as retained earnings. Cooperatives do something similar. They will have their with their surplus that they made. Once they make a surplus, if they make a loss, they call it a deficit. So they'll, take the, they'll have the surplus, they'll add any undistributed surplus they had from any previous years, and then if they have any dividends to pay, they'll pay it. If they have any transfers to reserves, they'll transfer to reserves. And if they have any other special um, things to pay for using a surplus, they'll subtract it from there as well. And then whatever remains will be the undistributed surplus that you record in the balance sheet. So it's kind of similar to the company accounts. So they gave us a question here, number five from um, 2023, May, June. They said the following is a list of some balances that were extracted from the books of the Caribbean Teachers Corporate Cooperative Credit Union. They give us some information on the debit side and the credit side. And then they said the following adjustments had not been taken into consideration in arriving at the surplus for the year. So the surplus for the year was this, 75900 Think of it as their net profit. Right? So they said the billing insurance expense had not been adjusted for a prepayment. So we had to correct that. Motor vehicles were not depreciated for the current year. So they did not minus the depreciation. So we're going to have to fix that. And then the board of directors decided to transfer 12000 to the education statutory reserve fund. Now that third one, remember I was telling you that in the appropriation account, you would have any transfers to reserves, just like in company accounts? Yeah. All right. So that means this is not an adjustment that would affect the surplus. This would go in the appropriation account. So all you have to look at is A and B. So they said use the following form to prepare a statement for the corrected surplus for the Caribbean Teachers Cooperative Credit Union for the year ended 30th of April, 2023. So we're gonna take the surplus of 75,900 and make these adjustments to it, right? So before I show you the answer below, let's see if we can talk it out and make sense of it. The insurance expense had not been adjusted for prepayment, which means we subtracted that prepayment when we were calculating the surplus. Are we supposed to include prepayments into our accounts? No. No, right? Because we only record what is meant for this period. Prepayments are when you pay in advance for something in a following period. So what we're supposed to do, what we were supposed to do at least, is minus that 500 from our insurance expense before subtracting it. But we did not, because they said that we did not adjust for it. 
So that means we we subtracted 500 extra that we should not have when calculating that surplus. So since we subtract 500 extra to fix it, what do you think we should do? Um, since we subtract 500 too much from the surplus. Um, add 500. Add 500, right? So that's yeah. exactly what we do here. We start off with our surplus. And then you add that 500 from the insurance prepayment to fix that. Then they said the motor vehicles were not depreciated for the current year. The policy is to use the reducing balance method at the rate of 25% per annum. So let's calculate our depreciation because they didn't do it. So let's do it ourselves, right? This is for the motor vehicle. The reducing balance method... The formula is the net book value of the assets multiplied by the depreciation rate. The net book value of the asset is the asset's value after subtracting all previous depreciation. So the motor vehicle at cost was 140000 And then all previous depreciation will be found in the provision for depreciation account, which was 20000 So the net book value is equal to 120000 Now that I know that, I can calculate depreciation. Depreciation will be 120000 multiplied by 25%. So that's what they said, right? It was reducing balance method at a rate of 25%. 120,000 multiplied by 25% would give me 30,000. So we had 30,000 for depreciation that we did not subtract. So what should I do? Um, subtract it. Subtract it. So that's exactly what we do here, right? We subtract our depreciation and we get our corrected surplus for the year. 46,400. So that part is done. Four marks given. Now, all cooperatives won't have a question like this. Eh? They just decided to test their knowledge on depreciation and prepayments. This doesn't necessarily have to come. Next part now, they said, use the following form to prepare a statement showing the appropriation of undistributed surplus for the year ended 30th of April 2023. So they want to see our appropriation account now. The board of directors have decided to transfer $12,000 to the Education Statutory Reserve Fund. Now let me tell you something about, let me tell you something about cooperatives. Cooperatives, their main goal is to is the welfare of its members. So they're always spending on their members, right? So there are a lot of times when they don't have any um dividends to pay on shares. In this case, if you look through, you will see not one mention of dividends. Up to now, they ain't see it in any notes. Have nothing about dividends in any of these in the description. Yeah. We have no dividends to subtract. The only thing they told us about was we have um twelve thousand to transfer to education statutory reserve. So this is how we we'll do the appropriation account. We will start off with the surplus for the year, the adjusted surplus that we calculated. And then we'll add any undistributed surplus brought forward. Mm -hmm. 33,400. From there, we're supposed to subtract any dividends to be paid, any transfers to reserves, and any other special payments. 
In this case, the only thing we have is a transfer to reserve. And so we subtract the transfer to reserve because that is something that we put some money aside for. And what we remain with will be our undistributed surplus. So that's what we did there. Took our surplus for the year, added any undistributed surplus brought forward, and then we subtract any dividends to be paid. In this case, there isn't any. Any other special payments. In this case, there isn't any. And any transfers to reserves, which is what we have in this case. What you remain with is your undistributed surplus and that's it that's your appropriation account so far so good yeah all right now this is where you'll see the biggest change The balance sheet, also known as the statement of financial position. So you see a few differences here, right? So let's go through the trial balance and let's go through which would be fixed assets, which would be current assets, current liabilities, and so forth, and why, right? Let's go through this quick. So the first one, membership fees due. So this is um, members who are owing membership fee to the company. So you know how accounts receivable, people that owe you money. There's a current asset. Yeah. All right. So membership fees due, but also be considered a current asset, right? Because that is money that they owe the company. The second one, short-term loans to members. People would see loans and they would think liability one time, right? But you have to pay attention to a couple of things. One, you'll notice all of these items are on the debit side, right? Liabilities would not be on the debit side. Two, this is loans to members, meaning we are lending money to them. So they now owe us money. So again, just like our account receivables, our current assets, people who owe you money, if we give loans to them and they owe us money in the short term, then that would also be our current asset. Now, if this was long-term loans, then it would be a, lo a, a non-current asset, right? Fix, um, but then of course, we know there's a non-current asset already. Nothing different about that. Investments now. Investments is investments that the cooperative has in other organizations. This and for company accounts, whenever you see investments, this is considered an intangible non-current asset. So this is also a non-current asset, right? Whenever you see investments, the company has investments. You treat it as a non-current asset. But we know about motor vehicle, of course. We should know accruals on the credit side would mean it's a current liability. There's accrued expenses. Now let's look at members' deposits. You notice members' deposits is on the credit side? Yeah. All right, so already it's a liability. Some people will see deposits and automatically think asset. But this is members' deposits, meaning this money is not ours. This is the members' money. So they put deposits into our company, but it's their own. And they could take it back at any point in time. So although we have the money, we basically are holding it for them, or we owe it to them whenever they want it back. So members' deposits will be considered a current liability. 
bank balance, you just look to see if it's on the debit side or the credit side. If it's on the debit side, you know it's a current asset. If it's on the credit side, that means it's a bank overdraft, which will be a liability. And then just like company accounts, this last bit here, your share capital, your reserves, and your, and your undistributed surplus, which we calculated in the appropriation account, this would make up your capital section. Just like any company account. In company account, to be your um, share capital, your retained earnings, and your total reserves. So it's just like that. So you do any balance sheet. Start off with the name of the company. Statement of financial position as at. For the non-current assets, we calculate them like we normally do. Subtract any depreciation. Get our total non-current assets. Make sure you include the investments. And then we'll work out working capital, just like in any other balance sheet, by listing out our current assets, which we identified already. All right, including this prepaid expense. Prepaid expenses are considered current assets. So we'd include that. We'd list out all our current assets. Get the total. Minus the current liabilities, get the total. Subtract total current assets minus total current liabilities to get working capital, just like in any other balance sheet. We'd add our total non current assets to our working capital to get our first balance. The second balance is supposed to be your long term liabilities plus your capital, but this question had no long term liabilities. So you just take your share capital which is here, 557000 You add your total reserves, just like in your company accounts. Your total reserves would be the education statutory reserve, which was 90000 plus the 12000 we transferred to that reserve. So in total, it's 102000 So we'll add that. And then you'll add the undistributed surplus, which you would have gotten from your appropriation account. This is almost identical to company accounts. So if you know company accounts, this should be easy for you to get. You add these three, this makes up a capital figure. And as you can see, both figures are the same. So that means it balanced. So the format here for your, for your statement of financial position is the same as a sole trader and a partnership, etc., you just need to be able to identify what is current assets, what is non-current assets, what are current liabilities, and what are non-current liabilities. So once you could do what we did here, it should be okay. Remember, membership fee is due, and members owing you money, so that's current assets. Short-term loans to, to members, they owe you money again, they owe you, so that's a current asset. Investments, any investment the company has will be considered a fixed asset or a non-current asset, and it's intangible. The next thing to remember is members' deposits. Just because they de hear the word deposit doesn't mean it's an asset. This is their money that we owe them, so we re-record it as a current liability. And all the other rules for assets are the same. The depreciation... Your bank being an asset, cash being an asset, all those things are the same. Your capital section is very similar to your um, company accounts. You have your share capital, the capital you raise from your shares, add your total reserves, which would be the reserves in your trial balance, plus any transfers to reserves, add the undistributed surplus that you would have gotten from your appropriation account. Once you remember those things, it should be good with cooperatives. And remember that surplus means profit, deficit means loss. All right? Yeah. All right, good.